Solo, open opinions. Long time no see, man. It's been a while since I made a video. It's been a while since I made a blog or a vlog or anything, man. I've been living my life. <clears throat> I've been doing good. I've been feeling great. I've been, you know, prospering in every aspect, man. Everything I can get better in, I've been bettering myself and getting better. So, uh, straight off into my today topic is we're going to talk about uh, being drug free, man. Now, before I even go any further, I'm not going to sit here and act like I've just haven't drank or smoked for like five years. You know what I'm saying? I have, I, you know, I've been I've been completely off of drinking, smoking or anything for a few months, man. And um, honestly, man, it feels good. It's the first time in my life I can actually say that I don't want to drink. I don't even want to drink no alcohol. I've been stopped for three months, two months, four months at a time. I've worked out for seven months straight before. I done done all these things, but I've never really just wanted to stop. I've always done it because I felt like I needed to. I needed to temporarily do this, or I needed to prove to myself that I wasn't just fully addicted. But as long as you always come back to something that's bad for you, it don't matter. It don't matter how long you stop. You are addicted still, you know? I got an example, man. I was cutting this guy's hair the other day, and he had a uh, he had a barber before me. Funny, the barber was 26 years old, right? This guy, he had, I guess he was doing heroin, and uh, he was clean for 12 months. He went 12 months clean, no drugs, right? Relapse, decided to relapse and do the drug of his choice, and he overdosed and he passed. That's crazy. So for you to say you're drug free and you've been you've been off drugs for a year and you're done and you go back and try it again, you know, you lose your life, you know what I'm saying? It could be bad. So just because you stop doesn't mean that you're done. It doesn't mean that you're not addicted anymore. The only way to be completely done is to understand why it's bad for you, why it holds you back, and why you don't want to do it anymore, why you don't even want it anymore. And I'm to a point where now I don't even want to drink anymore. You know, I've said before, drinking is my biggest vice, and it's the biggest vice I've ever had. I've never really, you know, smoking marijuana normally makes me paranoid or it makes me feel like I'm anxious. I, always, I feel like I got to do something next because I've always been a busy guy, so every time I ever smoked, and uh, I've always felt like I still had to do this, I still had to do that. What's next? What's next? What bill I got to pay? You know, where I got to be at? You know, who I'm supposed to be seeing right now? So, never like smoking, for real. It mellows some people out, it just makes me overthink, and I don't really like it. So I've always been a drinker. I like feeling buzzed every now and then, but I can say that drinking alcohol just it helps my social anxiety, and it makes me feel comfortable. So, I might drink. And now I can go out and be at the bar and be around people. I, I won't even dance unless I had a couple of drinks. I'm not dancing at all. You know what I'm saying? So drinking always just take the edge off of my whole life, my lifestyle. You see what I'm saying? And that's what it was for for me. And I always just I just felt like I enjoy myself more when I drink. So it's just always been like a uh, you know a guaranteed thing that I'm gonna do if I'm going to be around other people. It's just you know I gotta have me a little beer. Gotta have me a little something to drink, you know what I'm saying? So I can say now that I don't even want to drink, man. I don't even want it no more. I don't have the desire to, to not even a little taste. Nah, not even a wine cooler. No, I'm straight. I enjoy feeling just life fully, consciously. I don't want to be numb in any kind of way. I don't like anything that numbs me up, you know? I, uh, I've been working out. I got a gym membership. I work out five days a week. I meal prep every single day. I got I meal prep for two weeks. In the, you know, I, I stay with the food ready. I don't even got to eat fast food. I don't have to eat fried foods and Taco Bells and McDonald's. I don't have to eat none of that anymore. So let's just let's talk about how you can overcome your addiction. First things first, you have to admit that your addiction is holding you back, dog. And I don't care who you is. It's holding you back. Don't sit here and try to make an excuse and say, 
it makes you feel better. It makes you pay attention more. It makes you, it helps you study. It helps you relax. It helps you be calm. Bro, it's holding you back. You can get all of that stuff without it. Don't tell me that you need a drug to make sure that you're okay, to make sure that you function and properly. God did not burn, burn, make you and create you and needing a drug to make you complete, to make you whole. That's a, that's false. And if you believe that, you crutching yourself. Stop making excuses. You're scared to even try. You're scared to try to just be sober. You're scared to try to be here, put on here to do what you're supposed to do without drugs. So if you're making excuses for yourself, then you can just cancel the video. Because if you're, not, if you're gonna make an excuse to why you need the drug, you'll never be done with it. It starts with admitting that you don't need it and you're only making excuses to why you want to be on it. So step number one, admit that it holds you back in some kind of way. For example, me, when I drink, I will not want to cook. I'm not gonna want to cook nothing. So guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go to Taco Bell. I'm gonna get some, some bad food for me too. So drinking not only comes with it destroying my liver, my brain, my vision, and my, my kidneys and my heart, but also it makes me eat bad food. So just go ahead and put that in there, you know what I'm saying? Off bat. Number two, if I drink, I'm not gonna exercise. I'm not gonna go for no run. I'm not gonna lift no weights. I'm not gonna do no push-ups. I'm not gonna do no sit-ups. So it's completely counterproductive to anything healthy for me. Physically healthy for me is counterproductive, period. You see what I'm saying? Mentally, counterproductive. I, I make impulsive decisions. I drink and I get, I get more impulsive. I get more aggressive or you know, I just I just don't make decisions properly. I don't want to think much. I want to act more versus thinking before I act. So it already separates my mind and my body. It takes my mind and my body off of one accord right then and there. So it's clear to me that alcohol consumption is the worst thing that I can do for myself. It has held me back my whole life. And it, financially also, it costs money to do what you're doing. You know, drugs ain't free, man. So financially, Mentally, mentally, and physically, it holds me back completely. And if you smoke weed, if you do cocaine, it holds you back mentally, financially, and physically. Admit that. Stop lying. Stop making excuses. That's number one. So now, since I stopped drinking alcohol, I exercise every day. I, 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 I meal prep every day. I don't go out to bars, I don't go out to clubs, I don't go to the sections, little sessions and the hangouts, so I'm saving money, I'm healthy, I'm doing something healthy for me, I'm doing something that's promising me a more healthier future, I'm prolonging my life, I'm saving my money, I'm bored as hell all the time, I'm bored as hell all the time, so guess what? I have to do something to entertain me and all I can do is Go to the gym, cook, meal prep, watch entertaining videos, um, you know, just, just things that aren't really so detrimental to my health, man, you know what I'm saying, and my financial. Now, it's one more vice out there that every man could probably say they have to go through also on top of a drug addiction, and that's um, women. So you can still be out here having sex every day, catching STDs, Having kids that you might not take care of, you might or might not, uh, abortions that you might pay for, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot, you know, that's a vice out there, you know, because it's boring, man. It's boring. So you working out, you cooking, you going to work, and you having sex, you know what I'm saying? You, you, it's always going to be an alternative that's not necessarily drugs, but it's still an addiction. So you have to get control of everything. But um, my overall point, man, is I've been drug free and I feel good. And I'm confident enough to make this video because I know now that I'm not going to go back to drugs again. I'm not going to go back to drinking. I'm not going to go back to smoking or doing any of those things. It's the first time in my life I actually don't want to do it. I don't want to. I'm not doing it because I feel like I need to take a break. Or I'm trying to prove a point to anybody, not myself or anything. I don't want to. I don't want to go back. Because it's, I know it's not productive for me. Because I can admit that it's held me back. So now I had to fight through knowing that this is slowing me down for years and to the point where I can finally be like, man, I'm tired of hurting myself. I'm tired of doing myself wrong like this. And now I can say I love myself. So 
it's just a thing, man. You gotta, you gotta understand. In order to want to stop doing it, you have to under, you have to know why you want to stop doing it. And there's always gonna be that reason for everyone of why you should want to be drug free. And that's gonna be the fact that it's not healthy for you. People say weed is good for you, it, it, marijuana is good for you, it makes me feel better. But the smoke is not good for you. If you're in a burning building and it's smoking, that smoke can kill you within four, three, four minutes. So what do you think smoking is doing for you over time? It's just, pro, it's just taking longer. But it's still doing the same thing that it'll do if you just inhaled a whole bunch of smoke in a burning house. Kill you. Destroy you. Collapse your lungs. Give you cancer. Put mucus on your body. You know what I'm saying? So, listen, man. Understand that that's bad for you. And you shouldn't want what's bad for you because you should love yourself. Once you understand that, then smoking and drinking and doing all these things is going to make you feel bad every time you do it. You're going to get the drinker's remorse. You're going to get the smoker's remorse. You're going to start feeling that when you do it. And guess what? Over time, you're going to want to stop. And then when it's time for you to stop, you'll stop because you want to. Not because you feel like you have to or you feel like you need to. Because you want to. I don't want to drink no more. I don't want to smoke no more. I'm good. But it came with self-knowledge. Self-knowledge. Self-love. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that it's easy. I'm not saying that I haven't been there. I've been drinking since I was a sophomore in high school, bro. That's 10 years. I'm 25, about to be 26 in a couple months, bro. It's not easy, man. It takes a very long time. It's depressing. You're going to try to cope. You're going to try to find substitutes. Never go to a substitute. A substitute is worse than what you're actually doing. Don't say, oh, I don't want to smoke cigarettes, so I'm going to smoke black them out. The substitute is worse because you're mentally defeated. You know what? I'm not going to just stop doing this even though I know this is bad. I'm going to do this, which is less bad. That means you are defeated once you go to a substitute. No substitutes. Stop. Just stop, dog. You know what I'm saying? Occupy your time something else, something healthy. Don't don't try to substitute an unhe uh, unhealthy thing with a less unhealthy thing. It doesn't work like that. So now, I'm going to say, I'm not sitting here trying to tell you what to do. I'm just trying to help you guys understand that it's important that you start loving yourself, man. And if you're doing something that you know is wrong for yourself, you can't love yourself. It, it stops you from loving yourself. Because you're hurting yourself. You know what I'm saying? And uh, don't make excuses, bro. Don't make excuses. If you're going to poison yourself to death, admit that you're poisoning yourself to death. And maybe one day it'll sink in and you'll want to stop. You know? Understand that wanting to stop doing something is important to know why you want to. And not why you think you should or why you should take a break. Know why you want to stop. And any addiction, you should want to stop because it's unhealthy for you. Whether it's having sex with random women, they have STDs, you're having kids, you can't take care of all these kids, you, it's unhealthy for you, it's stressful for you. Smoking is bad for your lungs, it's bad for your body, it's bad for your blood circulation. Drinking is bad for your kidneys, it's bad for your liver, it's bad for your brain. These things are unhealthy, so you should want to not do that to yourself. You understand? And once you stop wanting to do that to yourself, then you can start loving yourself. And then stopping the addiction will be easy. So now, what I think about is, when I'm done, if I ever relapse again, I'm going to get crucified for posting this video out here in the media. Whether, whether only 20 people see it, it's going to feel bad for me because I posted this. So that just gives me more motivation. It gives me more motivation to continue my want to not do drugs ever again. So, uh, you know, anybody got anything to tell me? Any, any feedback, any opinions, any alignment? Post it in the comments. It's your boy Solo. Stand out, live on. You know what I'm saying? Open opinions for a reason. You know what I mean? D33Anthony on Instagram. Your favorite barber, holla at your boy. Drug free, I'm out.